हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज पल्लवी पूजर फ्रॉम रासायनिका एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द ट्रिकी क्वेश्चंस एस्ड इन द कोऑर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री टिल टुडे फॉर द सीएसआर नेट सीएसआर नेट गेट एंड सेट एग्जामिनेशन एंड पर्टिकुलरली आई हैव पिक्ड ओनली द सीएसआर नेट 2019 questions okay so we'll solve those all questions and before that please subscribe our rasanika channel like it share it okay and you can join our telegram link also where there will be uh, you will be getting so many notifications regarding your csr net uh, net or gate examination and it will be very very beneficial for you so right now we'll start with a question answer discussion now coming to the first question i have particularly uh, particularly picked uh, with respect to its spin only magnetic moment calculation so the question is like this the correct match of spin only magnetic moment for the complexes cis phenanthrylene uh, complexes they have given a and b where fe phenanthrylene twice ncs n twice and fe phenanthrylene thrice and cl2 you have and phenanthrylene they have given it is 110 phenanthrylene now coming back to its options you have so many values there 4.89 bohr magneton and 0 bohr magneton magneton is kept constant only they have varied whether both will be having 0 or else 4.89 bohr magneton magnetic moment now coming back to its question how you can approach this so what they have asked you regarding uh, re what they have exactly asked you they have asked you regarding the magnetic moment so the magnetic moment we know that the normal formula that square root of n into n plus 2 so this we know but apart from that what exactly we can um concentrate on the complex a and complex b before going for the magnetic moment calculation you have to check with respect to its high spin or low spin nature okay high spin or low spin nature now you have two complexes just let me show you in this way okay so now you have complex a and complex b so both are iron complex right so fe you have and fe you have now so fe is in its plus 2 oxidation state in both the complexes and normal ground state electronic configuration of fe what we have it is d6s2 d6s2 but in plus 2 oxidation state it will be having only 6 electrons right so you will be having only 6 electrons now with respect to this how you can resolve with respect to their d orbitals so just let me show you with respect to their d orbitals so just consider that you have 5 d orbitals all right so just let me choose different ink in order to fill the electrons so 1 2 3 4 so there will be okay so there will be one more electron uh, orbital so 5 then it will be 6 so 6 electrons you have so 1 2 3 4 5 orbitals with 6 electrons you have now coming back to its eg and t2g levels so now i can show with respect to t2g and eg levels okay so this is what you have so just let me show it properly here okay so here you have your t2g and eg levels okay so just let me show here t2g levels all right now it is perfect okay so now you have t2g and eg just consider this is for complex a so in complex a if you notice you have two phenanthrylene ligands and two ncs n twice ligand so two ncs n you have that is thiocyanate now coming to this here you have weak ligand also along with the phenanthrylene so the dominating will be uh, means neither ncs nor, nor this phenanthrylene are dominating so what you have to consider this is high spin complex so the high spin complex where the electron pairing is not possible that's why i will show the electrons like this 1 2 3 right 4 5 Six. So how many electrons you have? Six electrons. So I have filled up in eg and t2g orbitals. All right. Now coming back to coming back to complex B. Okay. So this is for complex B. Now in case of complex B, again you have to fill the electrons. So how many you have? You have six. One, two, three, four, five. six right so six electrons you have overall and you can see the t2g orbitals are completely filled but in case of in case of complex a where it is high spin complex where the four unpaired electrons are present so just i have to consider n is equal to 4 now right so if you consider n is equal to 4 then try to fill n into n plus 2 
So you will get square root of 4 into 4 plus 2 then that will be equal to square root of 24 and that is equal to 4.89 Bohr magneton. So what you have got? You have got for the complex A the spin only magnetic moment as 4.89. Now coming back to the complex B you have 0 unpaired electron and that's why you can say it will be having 0 Bohr magneton. Right, so zero Bohr magneton that is zero magnetic moment. Now, coming back to the options where you have A, B, C, D. So, among A, B, C, D, you have the C option where 4.89 Bohr magneton for A and zero Bohr magneton for B. So, this is what the answer and the way you have to approach the question is very, very important. All right, now coming back to our next question. So the next question is like the like this where four uh, four complexes they have given you nickel, manganese, chromium and titanium and they are asking you regarding the octahedral geometry. So the for the complexes the ideal octahedral geometry will not be observed in. So they have given you nickel, manganese, then chromium, then titanium right. So nickel uh, atomic number is 28 right so it will be having the configuration as d8 s2 so nickel is in its plus 2 oxidation state so in plus 2 oxidation state it will be having 8 electrons coming back to manganese so manganese where the atomic number is 25 and the ground state electronic configuration is d5 s2 so it is in its plus 2 oxidation state again it will be having 5 electrons okay now in case of chromium it is 24 atomic number so configuration will be d5 s1 so how many electrons you have to deduct now so 3 is the oxidation state in the given complex so you you will be remaining with 3 so overall 6 electrons will be there right in ground state now in case of titanium the atomic number will be 22 and it is in its plus 3 oxidation state then overall 4 minus 3 then it will it will be equal to 1 right so this is what you have with respect to their electronic configuration now your duty is to fill the eg and t2g level Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is for Magnus, then this is for Chromium, and this is for Titanium, and this is for Nickel. Alright, so in case of this, first you have your Magnus, so in EG and T2G level. So 5 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So why I have not paired up the electrons? Because water is a weak ligand, so I am not pairing the electrons. So you have 5 electrons in each eg and t2g orbitals now coming to chromium so chromium has three electrons right so i have to fill one two three so this will be your t2g and this will be your eg now here you have filled with respect to chromium in case of titanium you have only one electron so it will be filling the t2g orbital now coming back to nickel you have how many eight electrons so one two three four five six seven eight right so where the t2 t2g is completely filled but eg is half filled so by looking at the complex with respect to their eg and t2g level orbital filling one thing you can notice that whenever in the transition metal complexes in the given transition metal complexes if it has unsymmetrical electron filling in the orbitals then it will undergo john taylor distortion right so john taylor distortion already you have studied why we have to study because in with re, with respect to the transition metal complexes it has to attain some kind of stability right so in order to reduce the energy in order to attain the stability it will undergo undergo jtd that is john taylor distortion and it will be having some more stable structure so right now in case of titanium if you consider it has only one odd electron in its t2g orbital it will be undergoing it will be undergoing jtd and it will be not having the normal octahedral geometry but compared to manganese chromium nickel it will be having either half filled or completely filled electron in its t2g and eg orbital and it will not undergo john taylor distortion and it is already stable right so this is what the concept you have to apply with respect to this concept with respect to this question now with respect to the options if you check the option d is correct here only d is the complex where it will be having it will be having means it will be undergoing the jtd and it is not having the octahedral geometry okay so this is what you can approach with respect to this question now going back to the 
now we'll move on further with respect to the third question so in third question it is mainly asked regarding the color of the complex and colorless okay so the product a b means the reactant a it will give me product b then again it will give me product c so now the question is like this an aqueous solution of metal ion a gives a blood red colored product b upon reaction with kcn upon rock poise addition of any of the complex turns to a colorless compound c now you your duty is to identify a b and c so the approach is very simple so what they have given a so it is K S C N you have now after that you will get your product B which is blood red color and intense so it is blood red color intense color you have and apart from that you are treating with NAF and product you are getting C so overall the question whatever they have asked regarding regarding the concept of tra charge transfer process and apart from that you can apply your oxidation state normal concept also so in case of reactant a if you consider with respect to a b c d you have everywhere iron and the iron complex you are going to form which is octahedral okay now the metal ion a gives a blood red colored product b so it is having the intense color if it is intense color in the sense what one thing you can say that the whatever the scn they are treating with the reactant a the scn is a good pi donor ligand and it will donate it will be donating the electrons to the reactant a that is any iron it may be plus two oxidation state or plus three oxidation state right now okay so this is what one thing you can notice here now apart from that scn is a good pi donor then the fe has to be in its highest oxidation state now fe in the given all options in b and d in b and d it is in its plus three oxidation state right so it is in plus three oxidation state then what i can say overall between b and d any one of the option will be correct so one thing so one thing you have noticed regarding scn okay now apart from that after that the product whatever you have got it is intense color means the blood red color you have right so here the blood red color is maybe due to the tetrahedral geometry due to tetrahedral geometry but in all the given uh, options you have octahedral species so octahedral complexes in the sense the process may be charge transfer type of processes so it may be charge tra charge transfer type of process that's why what i can say the the ion that is fe oxidation state will be not changing after the formation of product b okay so now apart from this one thing you can notice easily fe3 and fe scn h2o5 five times twice okay so this is the, sorry the plus 2 oxidation state you have so the option b and option d if you consider with respect to fe oxidation state so here it is in its plus 4 oxidation state but here it is in plus 3 oxidation state so as already i have told that it it should not change its oxidation state so fe is in its oxidation state plus 3 only in case of this complex also then we can say this is also means the option b might be some right right answer so right now if you calculate for this one this complex with respect to their oxidation state you will get the correct answer so just let me show you here so fe where you want to calculate so just consider it as x and scn where it will be having minus one electron contribution and water is a weak that is neutral ligand so zero into five so five are there equal to plus 2 so it will be equal to x minus 1 is equal to plus 2 so x will be equal to plus 3 so plus 3 you are getting and the answer is correct where fe is in plus 3 oxidation state even in the reactant and the product b so option b is now correct okay but we have to further conclude regarding the product c formation now coming back to product c formation so here after the formation of product b you are treating with naf okay so naf you are treating okay so the product what you have you have your product as just let me write this side okay okay so the product b you have got your iron complex so that is fe scn and five times water and the charge will be overall plus 2 okay so it will be treated with naf okay and what you will get you will get fe f6 3 plus so the 
whatever the solution means whatever the product you have got it is colorless why because here the f is weak ligand and there will be no dd transition so the transition is forbidden and that's why it is colorless in nature okay so like this you have to try to approach every, each and every questions in coordination chemistry the equations will be very very easy but the approach how you give with respect to the each and every questions that to in part c and it will save your time too so like this we will be solving few uh, few more questions like pyqs only of csir net gate or else set set exams also and i will be coming up with few more things and finally thank you so this is what I wanted to explain today. Until that, bye-bye.